Yo, what's up, guys? It's Super Electivar here, and welcome to something new. As you all know, I have just finished my Pokemon Sweet version Let's Play. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, check it out. If you go to my channel and click playlist, you should be able to easily find the playlist with every single video of the entire Let's Play. So, this video is also at the end of this playlist, so if you are on the playlist right now, and you're getting to this video, that's awesome. So what I'll be doing here today is doing a review for this Pokemon game. Because this is my first review, I'll be testing things out to see how it goes, and how it works, and basically how I'm going to do this. So. As for now, let's just go over how we do the reviews right now. There will be 5 categories, giving a point total of 100. Each category will be ranked 1 to 20. The categories are Creativity, Story and Plot, Effort, Bugs, and Miscellaneous. Creativity is how creative they were when making this game. Story and Plot is basically how solid the storyline is. This includes whether it was logical, cough cough Pokemon games, Effort is how much of an effort it took to make or change the game, depending on if it were a ROM hack, its own game, or, or maybe even an official game. Bugs is how smoothly the game runs, such as if there are any problems or bugs with anything. And finally, Miscellaneous is basically free points, but is also made up of smooth gameplay, which is basically, you know, solid, easy leveling, not feeling lost all the time, and getting HMs easily. And the seemingly little details that they implement. And we'll get into that a little bit later. This totals up to be 100 points. If you do really good in a particular category, that game can earn bonus points. Now before we get started, I'd like to just warn you guys that there are spoilers in terms of visuals, and audio, and the whole video. If you haven't seen the Let's Play and you were considering watching it without the spoilers, I suggest you check that out first before watching this video. Thanks for watching though, be sure to come back after you're done. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at Pokemon Sweet Version. Pokemon Sweet Version is a ROM hack in which the creator of this game took a Pokemon Fire Red ROM and he edited it. It contains major graphical changes and there are Pokemon from all six generations. In addition, they are all re-sprited and given new names. Furthermore, the majority of the battles are double battles and all the people have different scripts. Also, some trainers and overworld sprites are re-sprited in addition to the Pokemon. The gym leaders all have different names, and you can't exit some of the gyms. A couple gyms were also changed. To keep the changes going, the type chart was completely changed, and all the types have new names to correspond with food. Finally, the Pokemon, called Pokesweets, are all located in different areas. As you can tell from these changes, they were some really, really, really huge changes. Now let's get to the actual review. First off, we have creativity. This whole land is based off of candy, desserts, and basically food. If that doesn't scream creativity, then I don't know what does. Also, look at some of the designs for the Pokesweets. Strawander? Squirpie? Those are all some really punny names, and they're all cleverly redesigned. This took an extraordinary amount of creativity, and I have to give credit where credit is due. The score? 30 out of 20. So far so good. Next off, we have the story and plot category. Please note that this was a previous version and there have been updates since, but let's get back to the review. The story and plot of the game was identical to the one of Fire Red. The original Fire Red storyline was not too shabby, with you going on your own journey to do as you liked while collecting the badges and beating the Elite Four. However, there wasn't that much in Sweet Version that was differing from the original game. As a result, I feel like this ROM hack doesn't have any special plot twist that sets it apart from the original game. On the other hand, I have to say the Chocobun plot twist was pretty good, and the third rival, the one that uses the sprite for Gary Oak, was some nice comic relief at times. So even though it wasn't that great, they did have a couple plot twists and they did change a little bit so I'm going to give it a 12 out of 20. The third category is effort. Similarly to creativity, the Pokemon Sweet version required a ton, a ton of effort. With all the new graphics, the new Pokesweets, Suites, and changing virtually every single battle into a double battle. Get it? Single battle to double battle? Ha 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 ha. Anyways, the creator must have spent a ton of time with this one. As a result, I feel like we're gonna give it a 20 out of 20. Perfect points. I feel like this section doesn't really deserve bonus points, because I already gave the game 10 bonus points in the creativity section, so... Bugs. Well, there were numerous bugs, such as the one that cost me LOL with Airy Cake. 
In addition to that, the berry trees didn't really work. A lot of characters had random text after they spoke, and, well, there was a bug for the entrance to Grapevine City. So due to all these problems, I feel like this game doesn't deserve too many points here. That's why I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 20. Now that's kinda low, but the bugs really weren't that great. Now for the final category, it is miscellaneous. Overall, I don't think that I should do much judging here, seeing as I already took up points for basically being a varied copy of Fire Red. The ability to do whatever you want in this game was great, and while you did feel lost sometimes, cough cough great fine city bug, that was mostly due to the bugs. Getting HMs and other key items were a bit on the queer side. In this game, the only necessary HM was Surf. As for the ease of access and receiving the HMs, they were a bit on the, uh... Yeah... I understand that you didn't really need them, but still. Cut! The first HM was received by talking to a random guy who didn't even stop you or anything. Okay... You got Fly by going through the game. This was the only HM you got for free. That is, without having to search for it, and it wasn't even a necessary HM. Like, what? Next, we have Strength, which you have to buy. Like, what the heck? Buying HMs? Lastly, there was Surf. This is the only necessary HM, and you have to find it by going out of your way. So get it. It's sitting in the Safari Zone, which is called the Black Forest, where you have to rescue a boy from the Black Sugar Pirates. Honestly, I'm pretty sure there is one that I'm missing, but if you have to go out of your way to even get it, and I don't have it, and I don't even know if it exists, then that kind of supports my point, I guess. As for gameplay, the bugs didn't really affect gameplay, except the leveling was really, really, really absurd at times. There were incredibly high level jumps in certain trainers that made absolutely no sense. They could have level 20s and then have a level 40 in the back. It was really weird. Gosh, that's a lot of problems. Eh, I'll be nice. I feel like the first problem was due to bugs, so I'll just let that one slide. I already took out points for that anyways. The HMs were kinda bad, but honestly, you didn't really need them. Surf was the only needed one, and they hinted at it by giving an NPC a plea for help. Finally, leveling isn't too big of a deal, but if you don't grind, you could be in some serious trouble. Those are my reasons for giving it a 5 out of 20. Oh, Arceus. With all my ranting, I totally forgot about the free points and the little implementations. Well, I should probably, uh, do that now. Alright, that never happened, so first off we have the EV Checker. The stats have letters next to it showing the amount of EVs your Pokemon has. In addition, there's a guy who can reset your EVs. Furthermore, you can make Puffins, Blocks, and a ton more to boost EVs. I have to say, the creators were really competitive. And while I may say that the Berry Trees are buggy, I think they work. So that's good. Also the post game stuff that I couldn't see sounds good. Don't forget about the legendary mana feat. Finally the vanilla dome and ginger arena where you can battle and train to get rare candies are really cool. Maybe I should give a little more points. Like um, 14 out of 20. I really like all those extras. So that brings the total up to... Two... Two, two, seventy-nine out of one hundred. Wait, it, it got that many points? Wow, I uh, expected to give it a lot less. Huh, that ranting though. I guess it's lucky I gave it an extra ten points for creativity. But yeah, in conclusion, this game could use some serious bug improvement. I'd like to just say thanks to the creator because if you leave a comment, he'll do his best to fix the bugs. Hence the great. Vine City Incident. That's a very laudable effort there. All in all, a great game. I definitely recommend this game, and although it could use some work and has a relatively low score, it's still a great game. Too bad the creator might not fix anything else. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, definitely smash that like button below to show your support for this game and my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, peace.